The year 2021 marks the centenary of the founding of the Communist Party of China. After a center of glorious history, the CPC has developed into the largest Marxist ruling party in the world. It has been in power for more than 70 years in the largest socialist country in the world and has more than 95 million party members. Today, China's per capita GDP exceeds 10,000 US dollars with the world's largest middle income group and the world's largest social security system. So what exactly has the CPC done to win such widespread support and respect from the 1.4 billion Chinese people? Why hasn't the party caused China to collapse as predicted by the West? China learned from two Germans called you know, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels at the beginning. Then it learned from some Russians with the Russian Revolution. It didn't mechanically copy the Germans. It didn't mechanically copy the Russians, but it was intelligent enough to learn from their experience and adapt it to their own country. Chinese Communist Party are called it's a missionary party. So you know, every time when a new time comes, Chinese Communist Party will to find its a new mission. For example, during Mao Zedong's time, the party's mission was you know, to build a new China, to defeat its enemy. When it came to Deng Xiaoping, the Communist Party's purpose is to get China out of what Deng Xiaoping called the socialism with poverty. Then when it came to Xi Jinping, China into a new era. So Xi Jinping has redefined the mission of the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Party's mission is the whole Chinese The CPC's century-long exploration and practice has not all been smooth sailing. Instead, it has gone through many ups and downs, trials and tribulations. These have not only strengthened the party's original aspirations, but also helped the party accumulate valuable experience in running the party and the country. There's no perfect uh, people, there's no perfect political system. And how one reacts to mistake is a real test of leadership. The big decision that China made was to prioritize the people's welfare in economic development over some vision of ideological rigidity, which had been a dominant uh, feature uh, prior to the beginning of reform and opening up. The only way you can not make errors is if you don't do anything. The question is, when you make a mistake, how serious is it? What do you do about it? We did the things we didn't have done in our previous country, and other countries didn't have done. So in this process, we went the wrong way. Every time we went the wrong way, it was all through self-correction, returning to the truth. For example, this is the complete self-correction. It's also a part of self-correction. Because we had the problem of the party, the people are not angry. The governing of a country needs talent. The CPC long adheres to the principle of selecting officials on the basis of both integrity and ability, with priority given to integrity. This talent recruiting system is rooted in China's time-honored political and cultural tradition, which is fundamentally different from the Western model. China's Communist Party's this selection process is a system of selection. Into the army, you have to fight and fight. Into the army, you have to fight to build the army. To understand the army's situation. In our country, there is no way to have such a political leader to take the most important role. 
to do, be successful in the Chinese economy, you've got to have very high levels of competence in lots of different areas. You've got to really run things. You know, maybe you come from originally from town, you get promoted and you go through a city, then you get to a province and you're running things all the time. I remember in 2017 an Englishman wrote an article and he said the big difference between China and America, the biggest difference is not that one is capitalist and one is socialist. He said one's run by lawyers and the others run by engineers. The Western model fundamentally is individualized. You have a concept in Britain called the big beasts. It means some individuals are supposed to be extremely talented. Uh, or in the United States, you have you know lots of personalities in politics. Uh, you know, film star becomes president. Uh, if we take Reagan or or presenter of TV show like Donald Trump becomes president, it, it's all looked at individually, right? But this is not a strong system. 西方领导干部的选拔，可能他需要有良好的形象、很好的口才，背后需要有精度的支持，会表演，鼓动老百姓，吸引人老百姓的眼球，让他投票。Among the secrets of the CPC's success, summed up by the international community, there is an indispensable one. The CPC has always adhered to the principle of putting the people first. We have done some big things, such as the Great Wall of China, 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 and the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China is one of the most powerful things we have to do. Every country, the political parties say, people first, we serve the people. They say that until they get elected, then they serve themselves, keep their party in power. But in China, consistently, I mean, I've been to almost every province in China and most parts of every province, I think. Policies all go down to the local level and they're all focused on improving very basics in the people. Actually, if we look back to Chinese history, it's an old, very, very old wisdom from Confucius, from Mengzi. All rulers put people first because your power came from people. People is the most important factor for their decision making. You should always put people first. Your power is to serve the people.